In the autumn of 2004, Florida's Atlantic coast was hit by a succession of hurricanes that left a trail of destruction. In the town of Satellite Beach, one third grade teacher was very conscious of the impact on the community and her pupils. It was kind of a time of turmoil here. It took a lot, a lot of people a long time to get their houses and their lives kind of back in order. Nothing like Katrina, but um, enough for an eye opener here because we hadn't had a hurricane here for a long, long time. A lot of our families did lose their, the roof of their home or, you know, or the home was so water damaged that, you know, you really couldn't live there. They had to go live with another relative, maybe live in a trailer that was provided for them. So there is some anxiety, you know, we don't come to school, we have to make up school days. I think the kids start feeling the anxiety that their parents have. Confronted by pupils struggling with the aftermath of the hurricanes, Annette wanted to turn their experience into something positive. With liberty and justice for all. She attended a teacher's workshop run by the local cable TV company, which introduced her to a range of weather-related resources and projects. Third graders study weather as part of the science curriculum, and Annette was inspired to incorporate an ambitious cross-curricular project on hurricanes that included report writing. Most of them interviewed a parent, some of them interviewed neighbors, but it just brought back and gave them some things to think about. And a lot of the things they learned was, yes, people didn't like evacuating, leaving their homes, but they got to visit family. And so for every bad thing that happened, it seemed like it was counteracted with something that was okay. And, and they need to know that even in a bad situation, good things come out of it. This is the second year that Annette has run the Hurricane Project. Today, her pupils are working on ICT skills. We did some researching on hurricanes and we um, searched several websites, we did some reading, we read some hurricane stories, I shared some of my hurricane experiences and they shared some of theirs, and then we decided to do a PowerPoint um, which is new to them. They've not done a PowerPoint. However, it's a really easy program for a third grader to follow and they have a lot of fun with it. Hurricanes gather heat and energy through contact with warm waters. To help out with a hurricane, you can follow directions, clean up, and help people in need. It's a pretty cool PowerPoint. I liked it a lot. I stayed home for, I think, Jean. <laughs> and I saw what happened. Our house did not get damaged, only we had a big tree fall down. Sometimes you do have to evacuate, and there are strong winds, and there is a, bunch, a lot of damage. Annette uses a lot of technology when she teaches, and you could see that she brought in the laptop computer so the kids could write about it, they can read about it, they can use the technology, so it really integrates and incorporates all areas of the curriculum, and she really did a nice job of that. I think it has been helpful because now I know more than I did, so if there is another hurricane, I'll know more about the situation. What is it that you can do at home to be prepared for hurricane season? What's the one thing? Yes, sir. You can stay out of your parents' way. You can stay out of your parents' way? And if you have, like, the wood to, like, cover your firewood windows, right. and if you have it in your backyard and you don't have shutters, you could use those. Annette has invited TV meteorologist Dave Cocciarella to speak to the class. Learning how to prepare for a hurricane is another part of reassuring the children and teaching them to be responsible citizens in future. So in your hurricane survival kit, you got to have all your water, 20 gallons for five people for four days, excellent. You need to have canned food, you need to have a can opener, you need to have a radio that operates in a battery, and a first aid kit. They need to be thinking that it's important that you do prepare, and so you'll have a little extra canned food in your cupboard, and you know, you'll have some extra batteries to last you. Annette has first-hand experience of what she teaches. In 1992, she and her husband and young sons had just moved into a new home when Hurricane Andrew struck. They were evacuated, but returned to a ruin. 
we were all safe because coming back to our house, it's very possible that we would not have been safe had we stayed, and I had two young children. For my kids, they, it was an adventure to them. There were a few hard times. They were in a hotel for three months. They didn't have their toys. They didn't have their beds. And looking back, um, I wouldn't do it again if I didn't have to, but I'm, I'm grateful for the way things turned out. The highlight of the Hurricane Unit is a practical project requiring the children to use their design skills. We are going to build, as a group, a little house. And it's only going to be about this big, but you're going to have to make it so that it will withstand our hurricane, which is Miss Nadine and the leaf blower. You need to decide what is the best way to build your house, what is the best way to attach it to the plate so that the wind doesn't blow it off. The project isn't just about design. Annette has determined that it should teach her class a much more fundamental lesson. She draws on her own experience of the community working together after the hurricanes. Um, one of the most important parts of the project um, is not scientific, but just kind of social, is um, to get kids to work together. Generally at eight, nine years old, they don't work very well together. They did see, however, that during the hurricane, it was essential. You needed to board up your windows, you needed help, um, and neighbors help neighbors. You needed a tree cut down, someone had a chainsaw, you helped your neighbor, they helped you, and it was essential. And really, in society and in business, and um, even in my job, we work together it, you get a lot more done, and they need to learn that. You know that it's important that you work together because if you help somebody and somebody helps you or somebody has a great idea, then things work better. So that way, someone might have a great idea that you didn't think of, or if you both have a good idea, what can you do? What's that social studies word? Put it together. You put it together, you both put in a little of each of your ideas, you can have a compromise and try and make up the best way. So these di directions say your goal is to construct a hurricane resistant house using the materials which house can hold up to the strong winds. Remember the goal of this is to work as a team. Each group of children is given a standard kit of parts including tin foil, paper, plastic straws, and a very limited amount of sticky tape. And you have to poke it one of them. Right here or right here or right here. Yeah. Then let's do it. Wait, yeah. 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 You think glue's gonna hold the hurricane? Yeah. yeah. I don't think so. Well, we're trying to cut a green piece of paper to make a group to make a roof. And we're using the tape to tape it on, so basically we're just trying to make a room. It takes them a little while to get going on, oh yeah, I can do that, because um, they initially want to cut and tape until they realize they don't have a whole lot of tape. The tape is all used. We're going to put, this, these are going to hold it up, the roof is going to be um, this, this with a little cover of this up, kind of, and the walls are going to be with this, the foil on, the and roof is this will be supporting it. The roof please. is going to be with paper. The, the roof is going to be with paper, and this will be supporting this around it. These little tabs that are straws will be supporting the roof. It will hold up half house and half the roof.
After 30 minutes of feverish activity, it's time to test the strength of the houses. The leaf blower's first pass equates to a tropical storm. The violence of the hurricane increases with each pass. needs a little work, but it's still standing. I just lost this room. This one <laughs> yeah. is not standing. This one's gone. <laughs> yes. There it goes. After all the excitement, it's time to take stock. How many of you felt like your group worked well together? Well, we did pretty good because it was Mariah's idea to put the bag over and oh, Preston, he decided that too. So we kind of worked together to put it over. So this was a simple kind of an activity, but this is where you guys should be headed. Um, one day you'll grow up and, and you could be a teacher, you could be a business person, you could be in a film crew. Do you think it'll be important to work together? Yeah. Okay, working as a team, you get a whole lot more done. It's been a good session for the third grade. And the first time Annette did it, she received national recognition at a Leaders in Learning awards ceremony in Washington, D.C. But while the award was welcome, it's the impact on her pupils that's most important to Annette. The kids enjoyed it and they got something from it. Um, anything out of the ordinary, seems to stick with them. Like they'll remember this, where they might not remember the science book. Annette's a model teacher. I think that's what teaching should be all about, okay? It needs to, when kids are learning, it needs to have meaning, it needs to be relevant, it needs to make sense to them. Um, you need to use a lot of different resources. And if you look at the project that Annette did, you know, she used a lot of technology. The kids were writing about it, they were researching about it, they were learning about it. She brought in a guest speaker. Then they all got to get together and work in groups, which is a very important. It was a hands-on lesson. Um, and then actually see the effects of, of testing that hurricane that they did with the leaf blower, you know, what she simulated for them or let them actually simulate. You know, they went through the whole process themselves. That's something they'll remember forever. You know, that's, that's what good teaching is about.